my name is Don and welcome to episode 6 of my part Paris Saint-Germain Let's Play on the Football Manager 2018 Beta. It's been three months since the last episode, I've recorded it all in one day, well done it all in one day since the last episode. I'm getting pretty fatigued now to be honest, but we've got a lot to cover. We've got five youth players that we've brought in, we've brought uh, Martin Ngom, he is four and a half star potential left back, very very good. We've got Fuddy Celia, or Silla, gotta go with Silla, he's a four star potential goalkeeper. We've got Guy Yao Kuase, Ivorian right back, three star potential, not really going to be the best but that's similar to where Danny Alves is right now in potential terms so hopefully he can make it work. Modern who is a four-star potential winger, and Silvan Lucas, who is a four-and-a-half-star potential central midfielder. So all very, very good. The other thing is, if you follow my Twitter, if you don't, links down below, go and do it. Um, the board gave us the money. I think I mentioned it in the last episode. It was an extra 60 million. I signed some players for January. Going into January, they're like, here's another 60 million. So I was, I was extremely happy. The problem was it was all transfer budget, I had to put some of it in wages, so I only got one more signing and a couple of loan deals done. But expect big, big changes here guys, we've got some big names in, we've got a couple of decent young players, I would say decent young players, decent loan players in, I wouldn't call them young anymore. And we've got some, you know, squad fillers, so let's go to our transfer history. So of that, all of that money that we had, we have spent it all. 2 million left in the kitty, 300,000 over our wage budget. We've signed Benedict Howdes on a free transfer for the end of the year. Iron Robin also on a free transfer for the end of the year as well. Good deals, them in my opinion. Howdes will come in. Thiago Silva seems to be getting a bit over the line now. I know Robin will be the same, but I thought, why not? And obviously, Mbappe signs permanently at the end of the season as well. So we start here. Alex Sandro comes in for 45 million, rising up to 66 million. Left back was 100% recommended. Just look at him. Absolute quality, fairly professional player. Could play all the way along the left hand side. We'll be playing at left back. Valued at £64 million. Brazilian international. I was looking at him and Marcelo, and he, when I went and scouted them all again, he came up at 100%. I think they were somewhere initially. For maybe put him up a bit, I don't know. Or maybe it was just price or whatever. But either way, it works. We've got. This lad, Serbian International, Fidges, Fidsa, right, signed from Sporting Lisbon, worth 42.5 million. We signed him for 31, I believe, if I remember correctly, that was hitting a release clause. We also signed Gelson Martins, he is the winger, 31 million, rising to 44.5. He plays on both sides, he can play really well, he's very, very quick. I've enjoyed watching him current when I've seen him, to be honest with you. Um, he's not quite as comfortable in this winger role, but we're working on that. Either way, he's exceptionally good. Um, we've brought in David De Gea. I said I wanted a big name goalkeeper. I wanted Neuer. Neuer, he was very interested initially. Then he said he wasn't interested, and then deal wasn't going to be done. What Hugo Lloris, Spurs were not willing to discuss any sort of terms with us. Um, so David De Gea was third choice. It's not that he was the third best goalkeeper. I think they were all very similar in ability. Looking at them, just he was the one we could get. Um, I just personally would have preferred the other two. We want Michi Batshuayi out on loan from Chelsea, costing us 200000 a month. Um, you know, he's not great, he's not bad, but we needed a backup for Cavani in that position. That didn't mean that Neymar or Mbappe were moved forward, so it worked out for us. And we've brought Mesut Ozil out on loan as well, costing 925000 a month. Very good player um, overall. We also have... Bear in mind, he is currently worth £59 million. Let's go and have a look at this contract. So, it's an optional future fee for £33 million for a player that is worth 60 Let me know if you want me to trigger that, guys. It depends on obviously what the board's going to give me at the end of the season. £284 million spent this year. Just insane kind of money, considering the fact that you can add another £400 million on top of that. I believe something we spent £174 million in January. So to put that into perspective, my Twitter has the correct figure, but to put that in its perspective, the Premier League as a whole spent 284 million, sorry, 64 million, something like that. 
can't remember the exact figure again, I really should have remembered it. Twitter doesn't have that exact figure, it has the exact first figure, but it's only about 100, maybe 100, between 100 and 120 million difference between PSG spending for the summer to the entirety of the English Premier League, eh, for January even. Um, on the outs, Yuri went out on loan 200,000 a month, Giovanni Di Celeso went out on loan for 100k a month, and Ariola went out for 11.75 million, rising to 13 million to Napoli. That caused a bit of a controversy. Dynamics need to be sorted. I brought in De Gea. I'd already, once the minute the, the bid got accepted for De Gea and I negotiated the contract with him, I accepted a bid for Ariola from Napoli. There were two other bids, but they were nowhere near as good, so they both got rejected. Um, David De Gea accepted before Ariola accepted. Ariola then comes to me, why are you buying De Gea? Are you replacing me? So I'm like, well, yeah, kind of. I'm not going to turn down a goalkeeper of that kind of quality for that kind of price. And secondly, you're on your way out the door. But there was no option to say, I'm selling you anyway. So in the end, the next day he, he goes, and then Thiago Silva comes to me, why are you selling one of our best players? And there was, no, there was an option to say, I will bring in a better player. There's no option to say, I have already brought in a better player. That needs to come in. So I don't know if Football Manager or anyone from SI watch this, but please allow a response that says, I have already bought in a player that meant he had to go. Um, either way, it didn't affect the squad dynamics too much. As you see, room dressing room atmosphere is very good. Um, all very happy. Not a whole lot of managerial support right now, right enough. This is where the, how the Herishay... Uh, I'm never going to pronounce that. Herishay... Go and leave me in the comments down below how you pronounce this. How the team leaders fare. So, Thiago Silva, Cavani and Diego Godin are the team leaders. Danny Alves, Neymar, Verratti, Rabiot, Pastore, Nangolan, Draxler, Kurzawa and Ozil in the highly influential. And then everyone else sort of lower down. Social groups, as you see, it's split up. So, Martins, the young Georgian striker who have promoted, never going to get anywhere anyway. And David De Gea, not really fitting in yet. Got couple of Belgians and Munier, who, oh, they're all Belgian, never mind. So you've got three Belgians, and you've got uh, Party, Ozil, and Draxler, who, they're all German, or they can speak English. It's basically a social group, and then we've got everyone else in the core social group. So overall, it's very, very good. As you can see, a lot of smiley faces here, a few unhappy at training, but a lot of that tends to be, and I'm going to release maybe a video on this, is because my training to avoid injuries, I've reduced my training. That's meant the players are unhappy at training because they're not getting enough training. But if I up the training, they all start getting injured again. So it's been a bit of a pain in the bum. Results. I tried to go back and get a couple of results for uh, fails of the week, by the way, but it doesn't let you go so far back. I think this is the earliest result I can get to, and the two results I need is that one. It doesn't let me click and this one here. Um, it doesn't let me click either of them. We've got another fail of the week though that we're going to send into GW. Mind and send any fails that you can in. Because uh, that series won't work without you. And it won't without, work without the rest of the community working together. So after that last result, which was Napoli 5-3, we beat Lille 4-2. It's a, quite a tough game this. I thought for a long time we weren't going to win it, you know. But we did. And take the three points. Kent we beat 2-1, that was in the cup. We then lost 3-2 to Rene. Frustrating result this. We were never ahead to be fair, but we played better than the result shows. We then beat Kent 5-1 in the league before beating Granville 3-0 in the cup. Yeah, that's the French Cup this time, and then back into the what I'm going to call the League Cup, because it's, I think that's what it is. Um five not against Bordeaux. 2-2 draw against Nantes. As you can see, our league, our cup form is extremely good. Our league form is a bit hit and miss. Uh, we then won 3-1 against Dijon, lost 3-2 to Olympic Lyon, and then won 1-0 against Agners, Anger, sorry, through Neymar. Then back, that was in the cup again, and then back into the league, we won 1-0 against Montpellier. That was quite an important result at that time. They were on bad form, we were on bad form. I think we were both in the bottom half of the table for form going into this game. And to get a win was also important because we were both in similar places in the table and sort of falling down. And as you see from there, we've kicked on a little bit. We beat Dijon in the Cup 4-1, beat Lille 2-1 in the league, beat Toulouse 3-1 in the league, 
So Villa, we then played, this is who we're playing today. We've got a 2-0 win away from home. Double from Edison Cavani. Thomas Partey got himself sent off in the process. 2-0 win against Strasbourg. Then a 1-0 win against rivals uh, Marseille. Neymar had a field day here. John Flanagan was getting run, rings run around him. And actually, to be honest, getting him sent off was the best thing that they could have done. Because after that, they came much more into the game. We then played Tours in the French Cup 11th round. I think this is like the last 16. And we won 3 1. And then we drew against Troyes. A late equaliser for them in the 78th minute. We were so good in this game. We just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. Um, problem is, is Neymar and Cavani are both now out injured going into this game, which we play today, which is Sevilla at home. We do have a 2 0 lead, but we're missing our two best players, arguably. Um, I say that. You then we're missing any sort of holding midfielder because we're going all the way down to that Rabiot who can't even play there really never plays there because Clergy is injured as well bring Pastore in we'll bring can we put Cavani on the bench 79% fast we will manage with that we'll bring Gelson Martins in we'll leave Neymar on the bench and please tell me that Kurzawa Kur is suspended of course he is of course, the two players that would come in for the injured players are suspended, or the ineligible players are suspended. Uh, so I guess we go with Munir there. Not ideal. Uh, so tempted, you know, just to switch Nangolan and Rabiot around here. Nangolan's a very, very good tackler of the ball, and David here is also out as well because he's ineligible. I'm just going to do that. Might bring an Ozil. Yeah, we're going to bring an Ozil for Verratti. Let, let you guys see Ozil. Um, any other changes that we could make here? We've got so many injured, suspended, or ineligible players for the Champions League. So obviously they've played for a team that's played in the Champions League before. Uh, which is why we're allowed Ozil to play. And um, Batshuayi obviously would have made the Chelsea squad because don't seem to rate him. So, 2-0 team lead coming into this game. Right, positive reaction. Let's just go with that. Let's just go with it. Uh, play, please. Let's not watch that. So, Ozil. Munir. Ozil again. Forward for Gelson Martins. He's got a pass in front of him. In fact, he's gone, he's gone alone. <laughs> that had been a beautiful effort. I think it was three or four times he could have passed there, but he didn't. And it didn't work out very well for him in the end. But it was a good effort nonetheless. Beltran to Jesus Navas. Munier. That's a decent tackle from Munier. Nobody there to pick it up though. Everbenega and Zonzi. Luis Muriel. Oh. Munier sleeping there. Kevin Trapp tucks it wide. Off the post. Remains 0-0 with us 2-0 up on aggregate. Rabiot clears. Mbappe chasing down. Everbenega plays it inside to Escudero. Beltran with the throw in. So many players open here, I'm not liking that. Escudero. Mbappe's won it though. Forward for Batshuayi. Oh, it's beautiful into Mbappe again. Can he break? Can he get a decent cross in here? No, he can't. Well, it was in the right area, just no blue shirts in the right place. Or able to attack it. Muriel. Pizarro. Jesus Navas. Gelson Martins intercepts. Batshuayi. Good tackle, but Nolito's not going to get there before Mbappe does. Had a nice turn of pace. I think we've got a corner out of that, you know. That's good. If I'm sounding fatigued, it's just because I've spent all day. I was planning on recording three or four episodes today, and I've just not had the time because I've had to go through so many games. Um, but I'm trying to make sure that we can get to the end of the first season. This Gelson Martins has scored from that corner. Nice head down from Thiago Silva. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to get to the end of this season so that we can build our team. I mean, I know when you look at the team... On paper, it's becoming very quickly our team, but I just want to have a few extra bodies, really. 
that would be my players no question marks over it and try and win the Champions League next season 3-0 up on aggregate here though which would put us into the quarterfinal nicely I think Bayern are through and Liverpool are through already from yesterday's games we are in the first week of Champions League games though so don't know who else is going to go through but Shuai oh that's poor from the Belgian um, so I don't know who else is going to go through but what I do know is if we get to the quarterfinals we're sort of on track for where we should be um, still on track for a quad we've got the final of the League Cup we're in the second quarters of the French Cup is Gelson Martins that's two for the Portuguese man get in son feel like I maybe overpaid a little bit for him but you know what he's got five star potential if he turns out to be as good as what he can be or what it says he could be then we've got an absolute snip for 44 million and that's also why because I want to win the Champions League within two years that's why I've gone for players that are more game ready already as Escudero Escudero I'll, we'll go with that scores for them on a recycled corner kick um, that's why I've gone for more senior players who are ready to come in and compete at that level rather than bringing in someone who's French with 5 star potential and is maybe 3 star because I want to do it within 2 not 3 or 4 basically Rabiot Ozil a decent effort from the German just over the bar and maybe a touch wide as well but with that January transfer window, and I look at that bench, we've got Variety on the bench, we've got Draxler, Pastore, you know, you've got Neymar and Cavani on that bench. That's five players who, you know, are going to be starters in 99% of teams in the world. I'm just going to say don't get complacent, try and get them to win this game. We've not lost or drawn a game yet in the Champions League, so let's continue that going into the, uh, the quarterfinals where we'll start getting harder games. You know, so that bench is an extremely strong bench now where there's previously first half of the season I'm thinking to myself we've got a strong first team and we've got a couple of lads who can come off the bench and do well but we've not got a strong bench yet I'm now starting to feel like we've got that squad depth with another transfer window I feel like we could take this club to the next level did also try and give Neymar a new contract to try and reduce that he's on almost double everyone else which is maybe slightly on the ridiculous side as Batshuayi scores 3-1 on the night, 4-5-1 on aggregate. They're going to need a lot of goals to catch up. Apologies if you hear my cat sneezing in the background there. Mike is uber sensitive. Going to bring on Draxler for Mbappe, I think. Um, and Verratti for Ozil. Sort of, I'm not sure. I prefer Verratti, but right now on form, Ozil maybe slightly edges it. Um, if I'm honest but I am very much a big big fan of Verratti on this game we're going to bring on Edison Cavani for the last 10 minutes of this game but sure he's not really done anything wrong but I put him on the bench for a reason get him some game time as he's returning from injury why not Neymar also on the bench but he'll stay on he only got injured in the last game so it's not like he's desperate for the game time they're down to 10 men as well because of an injury to Muriel I think might be wrong here Verratti whips it in. It's too deep though. Thiago Silva came forward. He was on a free header there as well if he hadn't came forward for it. Rabio. And we've not played a full strength team here by any stretch of the imagination either. Rabio. That's extremely, extremely poor from the Frenchman. Navas. And here's just Navas. Kevin Trapp actually just takes a touch that uh, Manuel Neuer would have been proud of there just straight in his foot, stops it dead no chance of any picking up and because he can pick it up there's no chance of anyone getting there Rabio is cleared forward, Cavani on the chase the goalkeeper isn't going to have a howler there though picks it up nicely, should it end this game guys it does indeed end the game 3-1 on the night, 5-1 on aggregate we're into the last 8 of the Champions League I'm going to say I'm very pleased with the performance Continue some good winning form here. Gelson Martins, the player assigned to be a backup, comes in because Neymar is injured and gets player of the match. What more can you say? Man United go through, knocking Monaco out 6 1 in aggregate. 
have to be honest, that scares me a little bit. Monaco have been my sort of kryptonite in the league. Well, domestically, I've not beaten them. And if we're barely ahead of them in the league, in fact, I should really have shown you that before the, we went in. Two points ahead of EA Gigamp, Jinjamp. I don't know how to pronounce that because it looks like it's going to be important this season. Five clear of Monaco. You know, we're not running away with the league here. Our form in the league has been so patchy that it's hurt us a little bit. And the fact that a team can knock a team like Monaco out 6-1, a team that competes with us on every level, scares me quite a lot. So we've got Man United, Bayern, us, and Liverpool in the last eight so far. We will go back, we will have a quick look at who else can, is likely to be there. Uh, bonuses paid out because we've reached the quarter-final. Okay, that's fine by me. So we've got Man City, Roma. Expect Man City to go through there. Tottenham, Real Madrid... 1-0, it could go either way. Ajax 1-0 down to Atletico and Barca leading Spartak. So we're looking at Man City, Barca, probably Atletico and then the winner of Spurs, Real Madrid. I think Real Madrid have had a few injury problems to big name players though. Um, we'll be back for the second leg of that tie, eh, regardless of who we get and what the score is. Eh, next, or do we come back for that? No, we're coming back for the we're staying in the Champions League for the rest of this season, guys. Um, and maybe the last day of the season. Just because I want to focus on the Champions League for this series. So we'll be back. This is only one date. It's only giving me one date for it, though. So we'll call it maybe in a month's time for the second leg of the quarterfinal of the Champions League. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, a like and subscribe is always appreciated and it helps the channel greatly. And I will hopefully catch you all next time.